Amen. Because we're going to fight. And all I want to know is are you going to win? Are you going to win your fight? Mm, because, because, see, if, if they didn't win, we got gloves. You understand? Because we're going to make sure you win the next time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you see. And that's all I want to know. Does anybody in the house want to win? Honey, that's all I want to know. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise is what we do. Hallelujah, Lord. For all people. Glory, hallelujah, Lord. Jesus. Jesus. Glory, hallelujah, Lord Jesus. 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 The power of love. Christian fellowship of the Antelope Valley. The house of praise for all people. Because praise is what we do. No matter what it look like. No matter what it sound like, what it smell like, praise is what we do. Because praise will destroy every yoke of the wicked. Tear down every stronghold of praise. Tear it down. COVID can't stand in the praise. Mental illness can't stand in the praise. Because when we praise him, we get the mind of Christ. When we give him the glory, we get his mind. Hallelujah, Lord. And he can straighten out anything in our lives. Amen and amen. Oh, he will straighten it out. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Glory, glory, hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Yeah. Yeah, pray. Hallelujah, Lord. Mm -hmm. mm, glory. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Ah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You can have a seat if you can. Hallelujah, Lord. You can have a seat in his presence. I, I was just reminded of something. Yes, ma'am. I was just reminded of something. We were here yesterday, and one of my spiritual daughters, I heard her coming all the way off the tent. I heard her. She pulled up in the parking lot, just jamming, music blasting. And uh, she got out the car and was just on fire. Hey, Pastor. It was on fire, man. And uh, she told me all the battles and struggles that she had been going through. And I was just listening. You know me. Come on, walk with me because I'm working. I'm not going to stand there and just, you got to walk with me. Come on, walk with me. And she's telling me all the stuff she had gone through. And this and that and what the doctor said and da 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 And then she told me how it can just really scare you, you know, when the doctor give you those what could happen and all that nonsense. You understand? It, it can scare you. But she told me that after she dealt with the fear of what they had said, she said she started giving God some praise. She, she said she started praising God. She started giving God the praise and the glory. And then I told her, 
And that's where you won, Miss Bright. And that's where you got the victory. Amen. Because, see, back in my day, you know, when I was growing up, boys fought. That's what we did. We, that's how we settled disputes, especially if you grew up in certain areas. You understand? And um, we fought. My sons fought. And um, whenever they would have a fight, first thing I asked them, whenever they got in trouble, fighting, whatever, suspended, whatever, they had a fight, didn't get caught, whatever. First question I asked was, did you win? I don't care how it started, who said and she said, all I want to know is, did you win? Yeah. Did you win? And that's all that was important. You understand? Because we going to fight. You understand? The fight is not physical. The fight is not mental. But it's spiritual. And, and I came this morning. I'm only going to be before you real, Charles, because we're going to hear some more. We're going to see some more of our young folks. Amen. I've been waiting for this point. Because, see, we're supposed to be in L.A. a little later on. But Bishop told us to stay home and get our rest. He said he got us. Okay. So, um, but, but I want to see what we were going to do when we got down there. And what I've seen so far, I'm well impressed. Amen. 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 <laughs> So we're going to just celebrate today, but God gave me a word for you all while I was here. I was going to preach about frequency and things like that, but uh, he gave me something else for you. Amen. Because we're going to fight. And all I want to know is, are you going to win? Uh, are you going to win your fight? Mm, because, because, see, if, if they didn't win... We got gloves. You understand? Because cause, we're going to make sure you win the next time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you see. And that's all I want to know. Is anybody in the house want to win? Huh, that's all I want to know. Well, well, well let's, see, let's see what God says about that. I got to give you a little word. So, um, so y'all won't think I'm just, just um, hood and all that. <laughs> but I am. But um, see, in the book of Habakkuk, this is what I want you to know. See, Habakkuk is a prophet, and, and the prophet tells us things to come. That's one of the functions of a prophet. He tells us things that are going to come because the Holy Spirit has given him a special calling in his office of the prophet. But we all have this same ability, no matter what we are, where we are in life, no matter what our title is, any, we all have it. Because in the book of John, Jesus said that God is going to send us another comforter. See, because he said, I'm getting ready to get up out of here, but I'm going to send you a comforter even the spirit of truth, whom the world can't receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But he said, but you know him, because he dwells with you, but shall be in you. See, this Holy Spirit. And, and in one of his functions is, is to teach you all things, and teach you things to come. See, see so, so, so what the Holy Spirit does in our lives is he gives us the weather report. What's getting ready to happen. And see, what he's been explaining to us these last few weeks is that a fight is coming. Oh, yeah, we're celebrating, but see, the prophet has to warn you about things to come as well. Because that's my office. One of my office is the prophet. So if you look at history, because see, Jesus is the same when, yesterday, today, and forever. See, all this Old Testament is in here for an example. It's not just pretty stories. 
Because, see, in the first chapter of Rebecca, I don't have time to read it because I'm not going to be before you long. He's describing what's going on right now. See, he, he's describing how our men are getting locked up. He's describing all that. You just read that whole chapter. He's describing the pestilence and, and all the things that are going on because there's nothing new under the sun. Everything is just recycled. You see, we as a people, we get so far off track that God allows things to come in our lives to pull us back. But it does not matter where you are, what you're going through. If you lost the fight last night, it don't even matter because he's given us a remedy to where we won't lose no more. You won't lose another fight. So what Rebecca is describing is the terrible situation my people are in because it's, sim uh, what is it, systematic. They planned it a long time ago, and it's just coming to fruition right now. So, so, so what the Holy Spirit is letting us know is no matter what comes along, you win. Because, see, he, he gave us the remedy. Because, see, while, while Rebecca was describing his situation, he was a little pissed off about the situation. And he's asking God, how long do I have to see this injustice that's going on in the land? How long do I have to see our men getting killed? Single women trying to raise children by themselves. How long did, can we, how long is this supposed to go on? He's fussing at God. He describes the situation. I don't have to read it because you see it every day. So he's fussing at God. And he's asking him, how long am I supposed to just watch this? So, so after he gets through fussing at God, he comes to his senses. And he says, oh, Lord, I, I just went out my own path. He said, oh, okay, God, second chapter, verse 1. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. He said, I'm going to stand on my watch and I'm going to let God reprove me for yelling and, and asking him how I'm going to and, and I'm going to take my punishment. That's what I'm going to do. Because Lord, I know after you chastise me for yelling at me, yelling at you, I'm going to just stand there and see what you say. Second verse says, and the Lord answered me and said, because you yelled at me, you're not going in the promise. He didn't say that? Well, I'm glad y'all reading your Bible. Because see, a preacher could tell you anything. <laughs> so I'm glad you're reading your Bible because that's not what happened. He said, the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he that readeth it may run. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end, it shall speak. And lie not, though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Now, he says to write the vision. He said, although it tarry, 
wait for it because it's not going to last. But it will tell you. Wait a minute. You said it's not going to tell you. Now you're saying it is going to tell you. Well, even though you're reading your Bible, and it may sound kind of confusing, well, that's what your teacher's for, is to break it down to you. Because, see, these two English word terries came from two separate Hebrew words, maha and aka. But we made them both terry. They have two separate meanings. Although it aka, although it might seem impossible, that's what that means, though it might seem mind-blowing, Though it may seem insurmountable that I can do this. He said, wait for it because it's not going to lie. But it will not occur. It will not be late. It will not be deferred. It will not be. But it will surely speak to you. If you write this vision. Because see what happens in life, sir. I've seen this over and over again. We come in, we're excited about God. We write our vision. We start our businesses. They start flourishing. We become doctors and lawyers. We write the vision. But it doesn't stop right there. See, God is always able to give you much more. He doesn't want you stagnant and satisfied with where you are. You see, if we get stagnant and satisfied with where we are, we'll start stinking. You know, our body is mostly water, right? So water needs to flow. If water don't flow, it's going to stink. And where that happens is in our mind. See, Satan come and play with your mind. Because before, before you got your blessing, oh, you were on. Oh, you were on. Oh, you were running with the vision. But, 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 but we got a little taste of success, and, and then we fell back. But life kept going. Life is going that way, and we falling back. See, so wherever you are, God is not finished. He's able to give you much more than this. You see, he's able to give you much more than this. So no matter where you are, and no matter how successful you think you are, you know, we got to keep it pushing. Because your business needs to start other businesses. You, you, you understand? Uh, your business needs to go to another level now. So you need the right part two of your vision. And if you don't mind, I just want to share it for a minute. Because I want to see some more of our young people. I want to just share for a minute how you write a vision. Because some people may not know how to write a vision. Some people may not even have a vision. Some people may not have heard whether there be any such thing as me having my own vision. Care not? No, I'm going to do home care because my mama did home care. No, I'm going to be a nurse because my daddy was a nurse. No, I'm going to be this because it just ran in the family. And we all stayed broke. See, but God wants you to establish something that's going to bless your children's children. It goes beyond just me writing a vision for me. See, this vision has to be for my children's children. We can't just stop midstream. See, and if you don't know how to write a vision, go to... Um, 
Let me tell you how the Bible says it is. Go to Romans, I think it's 4 and 18, and then get 2 Corinthians 4. Somebody get those two for me. I think it's about 17. Habakkuk said, write the vision and make it plain. So they that read it can run with it. That means everybody, everybody you know, your children, because see, this is all you need to be talking about, is your vision. We, we, we taught the men how, how to write a vision, how, how to have a vision for their lives. Because how are you going to have a kingdom if you don't have a vision? So, so one of the men wrote such an elaborate vision. I mean, this vision was elaborate, detailed. And um, one of my nieces came out visiting. She was on break. She in South Africa now doing an internship for, for uh, you know, she, she, she doing her thing, you understand? She doing her thing. And one of the young men wanted to talk to her. And um, they talked. First lady asked her, how did it go? She said, it was quite unusual. But in a good way. In, in other words, it, it kind of blew her mind. <laughs> that, 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 that's what happened. You understand? Because he had a vision. And everybody has to have a vision for your life. Because if you don't have a vision, how are you going to get there? If you don't have a vision, you could get there and don't even know you're there. So we have to have a vision. Somebody read uh, the Romans 4 and 1, 18, 17. Which one is that? You got it? Well, one of them says, call those things that be not as though they were. What that means is don't talk about where you are right now. Talk about where you're going. Four and 17, all right? What did it say? Did I read it right? He, he's talking about Abraham. See, he's he talking about a man that was almost 100 years old. He's dried up. His wife is dried up. And you talking about we going to have a baby? You see? So he said, this is what I'm going to do, Abram. I'm going to change your name to Abraham. Because even though you may be dried up, what I call you, See, Abraham means father's father of many nations. So he had to change his name. Some of us might need to change our name. But what you've been called. What your big homie name is. We, we may need to change. Some of them things. So he changed his name. And he said, I'm going to call you a father of many nations, even though you're dried up. And what happened? He became. If you don't know it, you wanted his seed. Yeah, that's a good place to clap. Because the blessings of the God go through to Abraham's seed. And if you be in Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. See, so he said, I'm going to change your name. And I'm going to make you something you thought you could never be. Now the other one, 
2 Corinthians. Which one is that? 2 Corinthians 4 and 18. It says, uh, while we look not at the things that are seen. Don't look at what you see. How am I supposed to do that? Don't look at what the situation looks like. He says, while we look not at the things that are seen, but at the things that are unseen. How do you look at something that's unseen? That's where your vision comes in. That, see, that's why you got to have a vision. You got to write the vision so when times get tough, you don't look at the circumstance. You look at your vision. Because the more you look at your vision, the more you talk about your vision, the more you talk about your vision when you say it, those molecules come out your mouth and go start attracting other molecules. And what happens when a bunch of molecules come together? Hey, glory to God. What happens? <laughs> They create. You ain't nothing but a bunch of molecules. They create. So whatever you say, that's what's going to come to pass. See, your mama may have called you stupid. Quit calling yourself stupid. You have the mind of Christ. Hold the thoughts, intents, and purposes of his heart. The doctor said, I'm schizophrenic. The doctor don't know. Um, the doctor is taught to put you on dope. See, the doctors don't know that that's what you think you diagnosed with. That's a special gift that God has given you for discernment. See, stuff happens in the spirit realm that we can't see with our natural eye. But some of us have a spiritual eye that they are diagnosing something else. Wow. We look not at the things that are seen, but at the things that are unseen. Because the things that are unseen becomes a cave in coming. You understand? The things that are unseen becomes a nurse and then turns into a doctor. The things that are unseen thought you couldn't get in nobody's law school no more, but you're in there now. See, see those are the things that are unseen. See, 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 the things that were unseen was a drug addict, alcoholic, robber, hustler, uh, murderer, shooter. I, it, it, what was unseen is this all, all of this here. See, that what was unseen. So you write a vision. But how, how do I even get a vision? You pray and ask God for one. You pray and ask God, what did you put me here for? He didn't put you here to be a pimp. He didn't put you here to be a hoe. He didn't put you, he put you here for a divine purpose. We get sidetracked because of circumstances and situations because we didn't write our vision. So you ask God to give you a vision. Oh, and he will. And the way you know it's from God because it will seem impossible. It will seem impossible. Now you got a vision. 
Because see, that vision will keep you up. See, you got a vision to be a nurse, but now your vision is to be a doctor. You got to keep it pushing, baby. You understand? You had a vision to open up a business. Now you may need to franchise. You understand? Because it needs to be something that everybody will know it was God. See, everybody knew me growing up. They know it's a God. They know it's a God. Yeah, they know it's a God. Write the vision. Get a vision from God. Ask God to increase you. You give him. You're giving your tithes, your offering, your tithes off your, your business. Your but he has so much more. But we. You got to climb higher. Because that's what keeps you on fire. Your fire goes out when you stop climbing. All right, so I'm going to stop right here. I'm going to stop right here. If you want to know how to write a vision, if you want to know how to write affirmations that you put in the atmosphere every day, be here Tuesday night. Be here Tuesday night. And everybody to come Tuesday going to have a vision. We're going to increase our vision. Tuesday night. Amen. Amen. Anybody don't know the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior? Anybody that has not received Jesus as Lord? We've all received Jesus. Anybody online that has not received Jesus? If you're watching online, and have not received Jesus, I'm going to pray for you right now. We all going to pray for you right now. The Bible declares that if one soul gives their life to Christ, all heaven is rejoicing. So if you're out there and you have not received Christ, or, or you could have received Christ and fell off, walked away from him, he hasn't walked away from you. He's waiting for you right now to come home. He has a robe for you. He has a ring for your finger. The Father is waiting for you to be tired of being sick and tired. He's waiting for you right now to say, yes, Lord, I need you. And all you have to do right now is just pray with us because we're praying for you. Dear Lord, anybody under the sound of my voice right now that needs you, we pray right now that, Lord, you touch their heart. Let them know right now that you love them. Let them know right now that there is nothing they can do to stop you from loving them. And, Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercies that are renewed every morning, every hour. Every minute, every second of our lives. Father, I ask that you forgive us of all our sins. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness, creating us a clean heart. And Father, open our hearts and let us receive your Son. Ask the Father right now, Father, fill me with your presence. Fill me with your Holy Spirit that teaches me all things. Brings all things to my remembrance and gives us the weather report for our lives. Father, I receive Jesus as your son. Father, I'm coming back home. And I ask that you receive me as your word declares in Jesus' mighty name. I receive Jesus now 
as my Lord and as my Savior. And from this moment forth, you are God's child. He is your father for eternity. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah, Lord.